Welcome to the video for chapter 31 of the Cambridge Introduction to Sanskrit, which is going to tell you about secondary middle endings as they are used in athematic verbs. Chapter 30 introduced us to secondary middle endings, i.e. the endings that middle verbs use in the present potential and in the imperfect indicative. These endings, as shown here again in this table, are also used by athematic verbs. However, there are a few formal differences in how um, thematic and how athematic verbs use these endings, and that's why we need to look at athematic verbs separately. First of all, in the middle, athematic verbs, which were introduced in chapter 18, exclusively use the weak stem. Athematic imperfects use the augment a prefix to their stem, just like their thematic counterparts do. But the present potential of athematic verbs is marked by the addition of e at the end of the stem before the ending. In thematic verbs, we saw e. Here in athematic verbs, we get long e. So let's look at how these endings are added to the stem of an athematic verb. And the verb we're using here is yuj, to join, which is class 7, which thus has the strong present stem yunaj and the weak present stem yunj. Given that this is the middle, we are only using the weak stem yunj. And let's begin by looking at the imperfect, imperfect indicative, which is the left-hand side of the table. Here we have this yunj preceded by a, the augment, indicating this is a past tense form. And then we have our endings added to give us a yunji, a yunktach, and a yunkta. Now notice in the first singular, we get the ending i added, which is basically just like what happens in the thematic verbs, but the thematic verbs have a stem that ends in the thematic vowel, a, and a and i merge into e. So we had, for example, abhare. In the um, in th athematic verbs, this doesn't happen. The e remains recognizable just as an e. Then in the second and third persons, however, we have some internal sandhi. Before the endings tah and ta, which both begin with a voiceless consonant, namely t and t respectively, the j at the end of the stem also loses its voice, therefore becoming ch. But because j and ch are palatals, and because palatals change into their velar counterparts before another consonant, we here get this ch furthermore changing into k. And finally, in front of this velar k, the palatal n changes into the velar n. So we get ayunk tach and ayunk ta. Then in the dual, we get ayunjwahi, ayunjatam, and ayunjatam. Notice that we have the same endings, tam and tam, as with thematic verbs, but we have a tam and a tam instead of e tam and e tam, which we saw in thematic verbs. Then finally, the plural, ayunjmahi, ayungtwam, and ayunjata. In the second person, ayungtwam, we find internal sandhi again, namely in front of d, which is a stop, we find the palatal at the end of the stem, ayunj, changing into a vila, and in front of this vila, g, we then find the nasal appearing not as a palatal nasal, but as the vila nasal. However, given that d begins with a voiced stop, the palatal that has now changed into a vila can also remain voiced. So it's ayungdwam. Finally, the third person plural, ayunjata, again has internal sandhi, because what we have is the ending nta added straight to the stem, ayunj, and ayunjunta has a nasal standing between two consonants, and whenever in Sanskrit nasals stand between two consonants, they don't remain as nasals, but they change into a. So instead of ayunjunta, we have ayunjata. This is a regular process, but it means that this third-person plural form very much looks like a third-person singular form ending in ata. So basically what you need to make sure is that this third-person plural form, which looks like a third singular form, doesn't confuse you. Next, the present potential forms, where we have the weak stem, yunj, followed by the potential marker, i. 
to this we then add our endings so we get yunjiya yunjitah yunjita yunji wahi yunji ya tam yunji ya tam yunji mahi yunji twam and yunji run Notice that in the second and third person dual, we have a y appearing between yunji and a tam, and third person yunji and a tam. And this y has the nice a practical effect that there is no other internal sandhi, so yunji, the stem, and the endings a tam and a tam, respectively, remain completely recognizable. Finally, a little bit of internal sandhi. Now, class 5 verbs form their strong present stem by adding no to the verbal root and their weak present stem by adding nu to the verbal root. So, for example, from ab to get or to reach, we have a strong stem ab no and a weak stem ab nu. In the middle, we only ever use the weak stem. And so the stem that we find used of all class 5 verbs in the middle ends in nu. The u at the end of that stem may drop in front of endings that begin with w or m, which means in the first person dual and in the first person plural. But this can only happen if no, no more than one consonant precedes this u. So, for example, of ver, class 5, meaning to cover, we get a first dual imperfect form awurnwahi or awurnuwahi. But of ab, meaning to get or to reach, we can only get a first dual imperfect form abnuwahi. In front of the u, we have two consonants, and this prevents the u from dropping out. This may sound fairly complicated and fairly difficult, however, you will see it will actually not prevent you from recognizing any of these forms when you encounter them in an exercise or in a Sanskrit text. That was it for this chapter. We hope that you found this video helpful. And if you have any comments or suggestions, we would love to hear from you. Please do write to us at Ruppel at cambridge-sanskrit.org. And now, for your own work on this material, good luck and have fun.